Bruce Cooper. Welcome to the third season of Highway 28. In this episode, we visit the Senior Center for a presentation given by Ken Doucette of the Middlesex Sheriff's Office on keeping you safe. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Could I have grab your attention while our lunchers are finishing up their dessert? Um, I want to welcome you all to the Pleasant Street Center. For those new faces I see here today, my name is Jane Burns, and I'm the Elder Services Administrator for the Town of Reading. I'm delighted to um, host today's wonderful program with the Sheriff's Office on scams affecting seniors. This is um, something that we all have to take seriously because it's not just scams that affect seniors, but it affects everyone in every age, in every stage of life. So I hope you all leave here today and pass this information on to your neighbors and your family members and your co-workers and whoever um, you see throughout your day. Uh, this program was arranged today with the Reading Police Department, Community Services Officer Krista O'Shaughnessy. Um, and it's my delight to be able to introduce Reading's fire, fire chief. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's at the top of my mind? Uh, our police chief, who is just as wonderful as our fire chief. <laughs> um, uh, chief Sagala has been with uh, the chief for Reading for the past two and a half years, and he's brought on many wonderful new programs. Uh, we now have uh, Kristen O'Shaughnessy here having lunch with us once a month and ready and right there to answer questions. I don't know if you've had coffee with a cop, um, the open house, and I'm sure there's many wonderful things he's doing that we don't really see behind the scenes. Um, so it's my delight to welcome uh, Chief Mark Sagala. That's all right. Hi, good afternoon. I want to uh, introduce Ken Doucette from the Sheriff's Department. He's going to run this great program for you this afternoon. Uh, I want to thank uh, openly, uh, Peter Katusian, the sheriff, as well, for allowing Ken to be here today. He's a great, a great uh, asset for our department. He helps us out anytime we need anything uh, with anything we've done in the last couple of years. So, again, here's Ken Doucette. Awesome. Good morning. How are you today? Good morning. Everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Perfect. All right, so I just want to start with this. So had I known that on June 19th, uh, what, what day, Kristen, we coming back for lunch? June 19th, I would have come back on June 19th and had lunch with Kristen. <laughs> so my name's Ken Doucette. I am not Sheriff Katujan. He's a lot taller, has a lot more hair than I have. But the Sheriff Katujan did say to say good morning, good afternoon. Um, unfortunately, this morning, something came up at the House of Correction he had to jump in and help out with. Um, he likes to get out and actually do many of these presentations. This is actually our third stop in Reading in the last month and a half. Um, we've done a couple other stops work with Kristen at the Housing Authority um, in another location. And uh, we're, we're very excited to have this partnership with Chief Sagala and Kristen and the Reading Police Department. So what I'd like to do today is I'd like to talk to you a little bit about, first of all, a little bit about what we do and what Sheriff Katuja does at the Sheriff's Office. We all know what Chief Sagala does because we see him out in public all the time. You see uh, Officer Kristen, you see the Police Department, you see the Fire Chief out and about all the time in the Fire Department. But a lot of people don't know what we do behind the walls at the Middlesex Sheriff's Office. So I just want to spend a little time on that. And then we're going to talk a little bit about scams and how to protect yourselves from identity theft and some of the current scams that are out there. So the Middlesex Sheriff's Office, we are one of the low, uh, oldest law enforcement agencies in the country. 1692, the Sheriff's Office was formed. We serve the 54 cities and towns of Middlesex County, including Reading with Chief Sagala. There's the, the Sheriff right there with his three children and his wife. Uh, the chief actually went to Bridgewater State. Uh, from there he went on to the uh, Kennedy School of Government um, where he got his degree. And then um, also went on to serve as a, a state representative up on Beacon Hill. One of the neat things about the sheriff and one of the, um, it carried over a lot into the, into the uh, Middlesex Sheriff's Office was that a lot of what he learned up on Beacon Hill serving in public health, he brought a lot of that programming and specialized programming into the Middlesex House of Correction to help individuals with uh, certain needs so that we can reduce the chances of them being rearrested. 
So the chief works alongside all of our local cities and towns, I mean, excuse me, the chef works alongside of all the police chiefs in our local cities and towns. Our primary focus is the care, control, and custody of the inmates at the Middlesex House of Correction and also those that are the women that are up in MCI Framingham. We have about a thousand men up at the House of Correction in, Ch in Bill Ricker. About 80% of those people that we have have some type of addiction, whether it be uh, alcohol related or drug related. About half of them have some type of uh, mental health or behavioral issue that we also have to help them with. And our job is to get them ready to uh, re-enter into society as productive, uh, productive members. So what the sheriff did was, when he first came in, he looked at all of our overall programming. And programming inside the House of Correction has changed dramatically through the years. It's not one cookie cutter size fits all. So one of the first things the sheriff did was he opened up a unit really directed towards our military veterans that are having some challenging times. Anybody in here a veteran out of curiosity? Any veterans? Thank you, sir. What, what branch, sir? Navy. Navy, sir? Navy. Navy? Marine. Marine? Marine. Navy? Marines? Navy. Navy. Wow, thank you all. This is, we are in a packed room right here. Excellent. Very impressive. Um, so we opened up what they call the Humvee unit up at the House of Correction, set up just for the military. This is off to a tremendous start, and this is a program that's being copied across the country right now. Um, and when you look at the numbers of people na um, statewide and nationally, that have been arrested for something and then go through some type of rehabilitation program inside a house of correction and released, our numbers are far below those averages as far as people being rearrested or recommitting a crime. So it's a tremendous program that the sheriff has kicked off that's being copied uh, all around the country. The other big thing that is a big issue nowadays, we all see the drug and the op opioid issue. Um, and, and, and in some cases, it may be affecting some people even in your family. The number of overdoses that we see are way up, and it's all people, I'm, I'm 55, you know, it's, it's that age group and even younger. The biggest impact that we're seeing across the country, especially on you folks, is that now you have a lot of grandkids where their parents have OD'd or are having issues with, with drug issues, and then they, um, now the grandparents are becoming custody, taking custody of the kids. So here, all you people who are taught all your life, you had your plan, you think you're about to retire. Next thing you know, you're back in the, in the parental stage with the kids. So this has had a big impact on this community in general. So the sheriff started this, this Matador unit. Um, and what they do is they make sure that through programming and education, but also through providing certain medications after they're released, it's also really, um, reduced the amount of people being rearrested um, and recommitting crimes after they get out of jail. Our newest unit, which just opened this last uh, February, is our, our People Affecting Change Unit. And this, too, is an initiative that very few um, uh, houses of corrections across the country have taken on to date. Uh, this is set up to, for people between the ages of 18 and 24 years of age. Um, and they found that through science that people, the young people's brains have not fully developed and that by having specialized programming, they can take and, and reduce the chances of them being rearrested. This is early in the program. We haven't seen a lot of numbers, but we are seeing some very early signs that this is a very successful program. I'd like to now share with you some of our, our special operations units. Our canine unit, which is our favorite unit of them all. Um, the, do the, the dog over here on the left right here, that's canine pebbles right there. And then over here, this is, uh, well, hold on one second. I'll get back to that one sec. Oh, this one, and this dog right here is uh, Canine Gronk. And then right here is Canine Elmo. So Canine Elmo, you think about from Sesame Street, a nice, nice, easy dog, you can pet and all that. Not a chance on that one. He is all business. So Canine Gronk, we did name after uh, Rob Gronkowski and the Patriots. Canine Pebbles is our drug search dog, which unfortunately we do need at the House of Correction. Canine Pebbles does a lot of demonstrations for Cub Scouts and different organizations. Canine Elbow, all business. He's our security dog, or one of them. You can see Canine, it's a little tough to tell in the picture right there, but um, if you don't do what he says um, and the officer has to release him, he will, he will get you. 
One of the neat things I've got to do at the sheriff's office is I get to what I call play with the puppies on occasion. So even I get to put the suit on every now and then. And this right here is canine Oscar. He's with the National Park Service. He was just up visiting us a couple weeks ago. Um, he does an excellent job. He's actually an explosives detection dog. So now it's your turn. Does somebody want to try on the jacket that we brought, the canine jacket? Somebody want to put this on? See how heavy it is? All right, we could, all right I'll keep it here till later. If you want, you can try it on afterwards. That's fine. Um, in the Millsack Sheriff's Office, we also have our digital forensics unit. Our digital forensics unit is um, one of the best across the state. Many of the local police departments bring a lot of the cell phones and computers to our department, and then we uh, can take and find the evidence off of, the, off of these cell phones. We also have our SWAT team. Our SWAT team works a lot with the youth in the area. That's a picture of our SWAT team. That was just after the Watertown bomb, I mean the Boston bombing at the Marathon a few years ago, and that was in Watertown right before the search. Our SWAT team does a lot of work with our Youth Public Safety Academy, which I'll talk about in a second. That gentleman right there is Deputy Chaput. He's the commander of our SWAT team. Um, Deputy Chaput is really neat with the kids in that he talks to the kids a lot about it's important to get a good education. It's important to make sure that you're eating and getting proper nutrition. It's important that you're getting sleep at night. And he also shares with the kids that one of the things that he does before he selects a member for his SWAT team is he goes to their house because he wants to see if they keep their bedroom clean, believe it or not. Because that's a good, indi in good indicator of an officer that's organized, ready to go. And he talks about that to the kids and talks about how they should keep their rooms clean at home also. Uh, we have some mobile oper operations units. We have our mobile command center, which Chris and I think has been here before. Do yes. yes, okay, yeah. Um, so our mobile command center in the upper left-hand corner there, that's a big bus. That's literally, it's a mobile dispatch center. So say, God forbid, something happened to your local dispatch center here in Reading. Um, the mobile command center could literally pull up and they could do all the, the emergency dispatching right out of the command center. We also do gun buybacks. We did one back in April in, in Framingham. And then we also just did one over the weekend in Lowell. So we travel all the time with the gun buybacks. To date, and actually between over the weekend and back in Lowell, uh, and I mean, excuse me, Framingham, we are now up over 900 weapons that we've taken out of people's houses. And one of the things the sheriff wants us to share, many times there are people, um, in the seniors that are in their houses, and a loved one may pass away. Um, if, you ha if you do happen to find a gun at your house, you can always call Officer Kristen, and they can help dispose of that gun and, and take that off your hands so you don't have to touch it at all. Because we have found through the years that the, of all the guns that have come to our gun buyback, two actually came in loaded. So it's one of the first things we check. So you never, we tell people all the time, you never know with, your, with the guns if they're loaded or not. So just don't touch it. You can call us for professional help and we can come take a look at it for you, okay? We also have our honor guard. Um, that they're out in parades all the time. They're at Fenway Park doing open ceremonies, that type of thing. Community affairs, that's the, the department that I oversee. We have a number of programs of community affairs. One of our biggest programs is our Youth Public Safety Academy that we do during the summer. We'll have over 1,200 kids from about 36 different communities across the county come up to Chelmsford for our, tra for our academy. Um, we include breakfast and lunch for the kids. We have scholarships that we give out to over 200 kids a year. Uh, while we're there, we have our crime scene investigation room. The kids love our crime scene investigation room. We, we talk about DNA evidence. Uh, we also build into that, we'll put, a, uh, we'll put a training gun in there. We talk to kids about, what do you do if you find a gun? And of course, we want them to tell us, we have to tell an adult and don't touch it, that type of thing. There's a sheriff with Maggie. Maggie actually has Down syndrome. We have a tremendous staff at the Youth Public Safety Academy in which we work with, a lot with kids that have cognitive disabilities. And there's our graduation ceremony that we have up at Chelmsford. We also do a program for our women and also for our elementary school kids, our RAD program. It's an awareness and self-defense course that we, um, for both kids and for ladies. We have our safety net program, which is a search and rescue program for people that may be autistic or, or have Alzheimer's. And then we have what we're doing today, our LEARN pro program, Law Enforcement and Residence Networking where we try to get out in all the different cities and towns across the county, and we talk about scams and some of the other issues that are going on that are affecting you folks. 
We just last week graduated our, spe our third Special Citizens Academy in which we, uh, that's set up for adults that have cognitive disabilities. And we, we bring in our canine team. We talk about fire safety. Uh, we also brought in the National Park Service. This is where K-9 Oscar came up to visit us a few weeks ago. There's Adam, one of our graduates right there. He lives in Waltham. And now let's talk a little bit about scams. So just out of curiosity, how many of you have received a phone call in the last year from somebody soliciting anything at all? Bunch of everybody, okay. Um, how many of you, out of curiosity, are on email? A bunch of you on email? And do you all, folks also receive scams via email, does it seem, also? Um, so it, we just want to make you aware of all the general scams that are out there right now. So just a couple quick, quick statistics. Um, in 2016, um, and these are the most recent statistics, statistics we could come up with, there was just under 300,000 complaints. The scary thing about that number 300,000 is a lot of times when people are scammed, they get embarrassed. So they don't even report the scams. So we know that that number is actually much larger. And it totaled to over $1 billion in total losses in the scams. The most common type of scam was for non-payment or non-delivery of services. Now this is a neat pie chart up here, which I find pretty fascinating. Because when you look at the blue section right there, that's for people that are under 30 years old. It's amazing when you think about it, and then you add in the green section for the people between 30 and 49, you would think that that's a very educated population that has a lot of access to inf information and they wouldn't get caught up in the scams. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but even that age group does uh, get caught up in the scams. The other thing is a lot of these scams are, are specialized. These guys are really good at what they do, which is why we're out here today to talk about that. The, the neat thing is this number here, the 39% for people that are 50 years old and older, we're seeing that number st level out, which is, which is really encouraging, which means that you folks, you're getting the information, you're making good decisions, and then when you think you need help, you're asking for it. In Massachusetts, just to share a few statistics, victims lost over $20 million in 2016. And that's of about 5,000 people that reported the scams. So now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the different types of scams that are out there that we're seeing. And understand this, they're changing all the time. They're developing these scams all the time to make them more, uh, to make them more intimidating, to, make them, um, to, to catch you off guard. Um, and the other thing that we used to see, for example, is you used to get the uh, email from the Nigerian prince, or you get the mail that says, you, uh, I have $10 million and I need to share it with somebody. <laughs> but nowadays what they're doing is they're using intimidation. Um, and trying to put you under a lot of pressure. So we'll talk about the different scams for that. Here's one in Belmont. Um, here we go right there. Oh, not coming up. Okay. In Belmont recently, where we saw that they were doing, um, they were coming around saying they were water department employees. So they may come to your house and knock on your door. And here's something to remember. Your generation is a very, uh, it's a generation that has a lot of manners. You're a very giving generation. You're very polite. Sheriff Katujan has given me permission to tell you, you don't have to be polite. If they come to the door, if you don't know them, you don't have to answer. If they call your house, you can hang up. It's okay. If it's really important and it's somebody that you know, they'll get a hold of you. Um, the other one that we're seeing nowadays, we're seeing a lot with the, with the Amazon, um, Netflix, that type of thing. And these are schemes that are really set up to the younger generation a little bit. But all of a sudden, Amazon will call you and they'll say, hey, we lost your, um, your information. We need your billing information. The next thing you know, they're getting all of your credit card information, that type of thing. <laughs> the one on the left for student, um, for student scams, this is one we're seeing a lot for the younger generation. So you may have grandkids going into college. Um, so when they're coming out of college, now we have these scams that we're seeing in which they, um, they're saying that they can help reduce the college debts and the college loans. And, and in reality, they're scams. Now I'm seeing, and I'm getting them nowadays, for example, the one on the left, uh, that came into my email, and it was a free estimate for a uh, walk-in tub, um, but here's the tricky part of it. What they're trying to do is, they're trying to get you to click on that little link right there. And when you click on that link, what that does is it, uh, a couple things, A, it may have some malware in it, and they can go in and they can get information off of your computer. 
Um, so you just want to be concerned about that. Um, and then we talk about some of the, the common scams, some of the common signs. It's always going to be they're going to threaten to disconnect your phone immediately or take immediate action. Um, they're, they're always looking for something to use a debit card or a, a prepaid debit card, which you see a lot in CVS and Rite Aid, that type of thing. So it's these cards right here. So the majority of the scams aren't even, we see a lot of them not even being reported nowadays. The other neat thing um, that they're doing you have to be really careful of is all of a sudden up on your, your caller ID will come Middlesex Sheriff's Office. It could be Reading Police Department. Um, it could be a, a loved one's name, somebody that you know. Um, they are able to copy the numbers and copy those names and then they're able to um, have those come up on the caller ID to make them seem more legitimate. A lot of times financial institutions won't even track them down. It's not worth their time because most of these are overseas in other countries. This is one I want to try. Uh, this was on uh, Channel 5, I believe, and I'm just going to play this video for you. The wide scam has now spread to Massachusetts, and this is all based on threats. Scam artists are cold calling people, telling them that they'll be arrested if they don't pay, and pay immediately. Janet Wu reports tonight it is a sophisticated, largely untraceable con game. Middlesex Sheriff Peter Cartusian said the scams come in various forms, but the scam artists all claim to represent his office. A mole man who didn't want to appear on camera said his wife first got the call at their home. This year, my wife, a lot. She called me up, she was she was crying. She actually told me that there was a warrant out for my arrest, but that I failed to show up for jury duty. He told me that I could avoid being arrested, you know, if I paid this fine. The alleged fine, over $800. But here's where the scheme becomes untraceable. They insist the payment be made through a store-bought debit card like this one. These types of cards, are cash. You have to treat it like cash. And just like cash, if you let it go or lose it, it's gone and it can never be traced. And jury duty delinquency results in seven to eight notices over a period of months or years before any fine is levied. Very, very rarely will somebody be fined, although it is a criminal offense to ignore your jury service and you can be fined up to $2,000. If that were to happen, you would not be paying it with a green dot card to somebody who calls you on the phone. It would be handled through the court and you have to do it in person. Caduceus said callers allegedly representing him claim their victims not only fail to show up for jury duty, but owe an outstanding IRS debt, or that the sheriff will arrest them if they don't pay off the balance from an online loan shark. They're so sophisticated, they spoof numbers so that it's the Middlesex Sheriff's official number showing up on caller ID. This is how insidious and smart these scammers are. They call dozens and thousands and dozens of people every day making these calls, just hoping to get that one vulnerable person. And if they make one or two successful calls a day, they're making well over $200,000 a year tax-free. Now, Jury Commissioner Pam Wood said she's at Sinsler. These scams are prevalent in 15 other states, mostly in the West and South. Massachusetts is the first to report them on the East Coast, so before more. Heather, thanks for bringing it to our attention, Jim. So that, that's the jury scam. Um, another scam that you get, sometimes they'll call about an outstanding warrant that they may have against you or against a loved one. The grandparent scam is also very pop popular where you receive a phone call or you might get an email from overseas that somebody's in trouble. And of course your grandparents, being the good grandparents you are, you want to help out your grandchild and they'll ask you to uh, wire money or to send, them, send it over via gift card. And this tra uh, stranded traveler scam is also very similar. I've actually received this one. I have a buddy of mine that travels a lot in Europe. Um, while he was away, uh, people had actually got into his email account and hacked his email account. Um, at that time, I got an email saying that my friend Larry was stuck overseas and he need, needed money because he, um, he had lost, uh, somebody had stolen or lost um, all of his credit cards and money and that type of thing. Um, I knew it was a scam right away, uh, but a lot of people still fall for these. The IRS scam where the IRS will call you, and this happens now, it's not only during tax season, we're seeing it year round. Um, I actually, we actually have a copy of the uh, phone recording of an IRS uh, person calling and leaving a message. I'll play it for you right now. Crime investigation, units of IRS. 
The reason you are receiving this pre-recorded message is to notify you that IRS has issued an arrest warrant against you. Right now you and your physical property both are being monitored and it's very important that I do hear back from you as soon as possible before we proceed further in any legal manner. My direct call back number is 916-378-220. So now the scam is getting, uh, getting lazy. They're not even calling you direct anymore with the real person. But actually this is very efficient for the scammers because they can make thousands of calls a day and then they only need one or two people to, to all of a sudden go into a panic and then call them back. Um, up alone just recently there was one of those IRS scams going around. They, they, they put the word out on that. Um, and then the IRS just wants to remind everybody they will never call and ask you to do a wire transfer. And this, this is some of the, the dead giveaways. When you ask to do a wire transfer or use the gift cards, those are always scams. And we talked about some of these tips already, very similar themes throughout the presentation. Then the, to us, the lowest of the low scams is the fundraiser scams. Uh, when you look, um, about six months ago or so, there was an officer up in Somerville who had passed away in a motorcycle accident. Um, and then just the last month, down the Cape, the officer that passed away. Just two days after he passed away, there were scammers out there collecting money, uh, they said, for his family. But it was really going to the scammers. Uh, Belmont had different, different types of themes of scams. Um, people received a phone call saying they were having an anniversary celebration for the town. And they were trying to get money from them that way. The other big one that we're seeing a big increase on nowadays is the contractor and utility scams. All of a sudden they call you up and they say, hey, you didn't pay your, elect your electrical bill uh, for the last couple months. You owe us $500 or whatever it may be. Or, or we're coming out to shut off your electricity today. Ironically, what we're seeing is a lot of business owners who are very educated fall for this because all of a sudden they may be, it may be a restaurant, for example, and they say, we're shutting off your, your electricity right now. It's 10 a.m. in the morning, and they're about to have their lunch rush. So all of a sudden they make that, that payment over the phone. So you just want to be aware of those. Um, here's one that actually came into my email. I happen to have RCN. Um, so you can see it came in from the RCN uh, help desk. So, but I am aware that if right here, all they want you to do is they want you to click on that little link right there. Um, and then at that point, your computer gets affected or they're able to get information off of your computer. What happens is you have Comcast, you have Verizon, you have RCN. I get all the emails all the time. Uh, from all of them. Uh, our, our Attorney General, Mara Healy, recently put out a, a tweet talking about the electrical bill and people coming around to your door to, to see your electric bill. If anybody comes to your door saying they can save you money, never show them any of your information. Then we have the Microsoft scam. You'll, you'll see it every now and then. It could be via phone or could come up on your computer um, where they'll have you call into it what you think is the help desk but there's really somebody that's getting access into your computer. Or they may say that your computer has a virus. Um, this was something that came up in Belmont over the last six months. Also, you, you, you can see these coming in via, if you have an Apple computer, we see those coming in also, saying that your, it's your, um, your information's been downloaded from the cloud, they, they, they'll say. Now the old fashioned way, using the mail. Does anybody see anything odd up here with this as you look at this letter? This is a letter somebody received, sir? There's no U.S. Airlines. There's no U.S. Airlines. Good job. That's very good. Um, so you have a U.S. Air, but there's no U.S. Airlines. The other thing that you, this generation is very good at, you guys are good at grammar and you're good at spelling. All right? A lot of these, when you go through a lot of these letters, there's misspellings. They're not grammatically correct. Um, and you also see it in your emails that will come in also. Here's one that somebody up in Marlboro sent to me um, after we did a presentation. And of course, this is the old one that says, hey, you're about to win uh, $900,000. Um, but all they want you to do is, in order to get that $900,000, you need to send them the $7,500 processing fee. <laughs> all right? So you, you need to be aware of that, yes. And then, so with that letter came this check. When you look at the check, it looks very legitimate, it looks very real. Um, this all becomes part of the scam. Um, here's another one that came up just recently. Uh, we picked this one up in Malden, the one on the, on the left-hand side. Um, and this was a scam, uh, kind of like Publishers Clearinghouse is what they were saying, 
But then once you call the number, that's when they get your information. Another way that they come up, and we were in Newton last year on the left, um, they come in via text. Uh, uh, one of the, the uh, people in one of the housing units up there share that information. So again, what they'll do is they'll put out Citibank, Bank of America. They'll put out all different ones, figuring sooner or later that they're going to hit on your bank. Here's another one I got from the RCN help desk. Does anybody in here work with Netflix or anything? Just have Netflix? Okay. So this is one right now where they say that your, your accounts, it's going to be um, revoked or uh, uh, suspended. And then they want, they, they want you to share your personal information so that they can get it back up and running again. You just want to be aware of those. So when you look at banks, Amazon, Netflix, utility companies, it's all diff just different angles as far as the scams go. Now here's one I want to show you. So this is the email that I got from DHL Express Delivery. But then if you notice right over here, that's actually the email address that it came from. I actually brought this one down to our digital forensics unit and they were able to get the email address. So as you can see, this is definitely not DHL right there. Not only that, but it's China. Exactly, yes. Somewhere way overseas. Um, so then just to remind people, you never want to give out your social security number. Um, be careful. Does anybody in here, just out of curiosity, does anybody do social media, Facebook, Twitter, or anything like that? A few hands. Yep, we're seeing an increase in that with, with, with this generation. It's actually a great way to stay in touch with your grandkids and your nieces and your nephews. Um, but you just want to be careful and not share too much information. Here's one that came into my email that Ken Doucette has a negative, uh, negative item on my, on my uh, public record. Of course, you would think that um, I should be very concerned about that. But again, there's a link on there they want you to click on, and then they have access to your computer. Here's one I got from my good friend Chuck. I play hockey with Chuck. He's a Waltham fireman. He let me use this, this particular um, email. So when Chuck sent me the email, he says, Sup, Ken? Chuck would never talk to me that way. <laughs> Chuck no, definitely would not. But again, what it is is it comes in from my friend, and then it has this link down here that they want you to click on. The one on the right, also from a friend of mine, Rachel. Um, so again, all these accounts, all these email accounts have been hacked, and that's how they're getting into all this. Here's one from my friend John Boudreau. And then John, that's definitely not John Boudreau's email address, I'll tell you that right now. So another thing, if, you're, if you are on email, another giveaway is up, whoops, sorry, let me go back, is up in this area here. Whenever they come in with a number of names on it, that's probably because they accessed all those names out of, out of John's, for example, John's email uh, address book. Here's one here, um, in response to your email. So I, I would think, or somebody would think, hey, I sent an email, I need to click on this. In reality, it's another scam. And who doesn't want to win a $50 gift card from CVS? Wouldn't that be awesome? Remember, if it, as the sheriff always says, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Here's one for Amazon. Hey, I, I, you have a reward coming from Amazon. Click right on that. Unpaid tax refunds. We see this a lot in Massachusetts. You can actually go online and you can get this information through the state. You don't have to do any of this online uh, through an email. So just a few fire prevention tips. Never, never, never give out your social security number or your bank account information. If the IRS or law enforcement contact you and they'll threaten some type of arrest or immediate payments needed, um, it's, it's probably some type of scam. And if somebody does call you, it's okay to call your local police department. It's okay to call us at the sheriff's office. It's okay to call, another great resource is your own bank because the banks don't want to see you get scammed either. If they ask you to pay with the green dot card or some type of money card, you, that's probably going to be a scam. You want to be aware of that. And then if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So that's my presentation. We're close to ice cream time. Do you folks have any questions of me? Yes, sir. I understand there's a, one that's going out there all over the country. They'll call you, they'll send you an email, and then you can say, can I hear me okay? If you say yes, Yes. So what, it, what, what the gentleman was saying was, you get a phone call, and it's, you don't recognize who it's from, and they'll say, can you hear me okay? At which time you respond, and you say, yes. So then what they'll do is, they'll take that yes, and then they'll put it into some type of agreement, 
So you just want to be aware. So if somebody calls your house, it's better off just to say, who's this, rather than to answer yes at all. Or, as the chef has mentioned, if you don't know them, just hang up. Because if it's important, somebody's going to get a hold of you. Any other questions? Yes? Uh -huh. I know that on the top of the screen you have the phone number. Yes. And if you don't want, if you see the number, like yes. there's been this number that I've been getting every two or three days they call it. Yep. It starts with a V. Yep. And I just don't even answer the phone. Correct. It's yep. like, so if you have that, yep. you see the number, so you don't even answer Right, that. so you don't even have to get up from your couch at that point. Yeah. But actually, when you're checking your telephones, if you don't recognize the number, they'll leave a message if they have to get a hold of you. So again, it, it's okay not to answer your phone if you don't recognize the phone number. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Two, two things that are worth no, noting. Uh, Comcast and so forth have a no more robo uh -huh. app that will block some of the uh, spam phone calls. Yep. Yeah. And uh, what they're doing now with a lot of the calls is they use your local area code and office code. Mm -hmm. So they come in from what looks like a neighbor. Yep. Somebody in your town. It, exactly, yes. So um, so what he, what he was mentioning was that the call, when the caller ID comes in, it could look like your friend or your neighbor. And again, that's where they'll copy the Middlesex Sheriff's Office, they'll copy the Reading Police Department, but it could be Sally Smith, who's your neighbor. So you just want to be aware of that. If something like that comes in, it really may not be Sally Smith that's calling. So you want to be aware of that. And if that does happen, you want to notify the local authorities just to make them aware. Yep. Any other questions? Yes. I just want to caution them of one other scam. If you haven't received a new Medicare card, card yet, you will be getting one in June. Medicare will not call you. So you get a call from Medicare saying, we want to send you your new card. We need to validate your information. That's not Medicare. But you will be getting a new card if you haven't gotten one already. Thank, that's, a, that's great information. So we'll, uh, I'm going to add that to the presentation, as a matter yeah, of fact. Yes. It's starting to creep up. Yep. Um, because everyone is getting a new card. They removed your Social Security number from your Medicare card. But they might call you and say, I want to ver verify this is you. So, just hang up. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Verizon is starting to uh, put scam in front of some numbers. Do you know how they are determining that it's a scam? No, actually, I have to show So the, the, what she was mentioning was that at Verizon, the phone number will come up. It'll say scam in front of it. Okay. Spam. Oh, oh, spam. spam. Oh, spam. Oh, spam. Okay. Um, okay. So I, I don't know. Actually, this is the first I've heard of it. So it's something I'll have to check on. So a number of you have seen that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that they actually take like the you know, the bad number that's the no no yeah. and automate it into the into the caller ID. Okay. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Yep. So and again, this is where you have to use your judgment. You know, when the when you see the name when it comes up. If you don't recognize the person right away, it's okay to hang up. That's all. Yes, sir. They say that again. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yes. So the gentleman has mentioned that. Um, if you have a computer and you enter that phone number of, the, of that, for example, somebody mentioned that they're getting multiple phone calls, I think. Um, so if you take and you enter that into Google, sometimes it'll come up and that, the Google search will tell you that that's a scam phone number. So that's, yes. Anything else? Chris, anything else you want to add before we finish up? Oh, good. Oh, oh sure. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. So she got a call one day saying the police were going to arrest her. And how could you arrest that cute face right there? Did they arrest you? No, they did not. And you hung up right away. Excellent. Perfect. So I have a gut feeling that Kristen's not looking for you. Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. And it 
was a scam. They were trying to sell me something that I had okay. to take care of me. So I called that person back mm -hmm. to let them know their names being used. Yep. And I've been seeing that more and more. In yep. Reddit. So is there anything being done to try to stop that? Yeah, so what you have to do is you have to contact your local, um, whatever your carrier is, whether it be Comcast, Verizon, whoever it may be, RCN. Um, you, you need to notify them that somebody has spoofed your phone number or copied your phone number to make them aware. Um, I would also let the local police department know also, um, just so that they're aware of it. Yep. And, and unfortunately, this is all happening from overseas, so it's very difficult to track them down and to stop it. Yes, exactly, yes. That, that is one way to get around the do not call us. Anything else? Well, I want to thank you all. I'll be around for a few minutes if anybody else has any questions or thoughts. Uh, thank you all very much. Stay dry. Uh, Chris, is it time for ice cream? Perfect. Thank you all very much. Thank you for writing cable access.